Hi readers! Today we are going to read Red Eyes or Blue Feathers. It's a book about animal colors, so it tells us what its topic is. It's about animal colors. This book was written by Patricia M. Stockland and it was illustrated by Todd Oren. So there aren't going to be photographs, they were illustrations pictures that are drawn. So Patricia wrote the words and Todd drew the pictures. He's the illustrator. Red Eyes or Blue Feathers by Patricia M. Stockland. Color Adaptations. What's the best way to survive in the wild? Adaptation. Color is one way to adapt. The word adapt means to change. So how does an animal's color help it survive? Well, some animals have colors that help them hide from hungry predators. Other animals use their color to keep from being seen while they hunt. Colors even help animals find mates or talk to each other. Read on to find out why some animals have such clever colors. This is the red-eyed tree frog. Bright red eyes shine in the night. The red-eyed tree frog is wide awake. During the day, this tiny frog hides its bright colors by closing its eyes and tucking up its legs. The red-eyed tree frog's shiny green back blends in with the trees. Predators think the little frog is a leaf. So a predator is another animal that would like to eat him. A predator is any animal that's hunting another animal. And his color helps him how? He uses it to blend in. He uses it as camouflage. What does he blend in with? A leaf. So he closes those bright red eyes of his and he tucks his legs up under him so that he would blend in with the leaf. It's called camouflage. The vertical pupils, that means this black part in his eye, and vertical means it goes up and down. The vertical pupils of the red-eyed tree frog help it see better at night. Daytime frogs usually have horizontal pupils, so their eye, their eye pupil goes back and forth instead of up and down. So you could tell whether an animal was a daytime animal or a nighttime nocturnal animal from looking at his pupils. Polar bear. So our small detail here, our small topic is going to be about the polar bear. But the main topic is going to be animal colors. So what did we learn about that red-eyed tree frog? We learned about how his coloring helps him stay safe. He uses it to blend in. He uses it to camouflage. So what will we learn about polar bears? We'll learn about their coloring. White fur surrounds a shiny black nose. A polar bear slowly lumbers across the snow. The polar bear's snow-colored coat blends in with the Arctic tundra. So that's all the snow and ice around him. Its favorite treat is seal blubber. As the bear sits on the edge of the ice, a seal comes up for air. The seal doesn't see the giant paw grabbing for it. Grrr. Hmm. Why doesn't the seal see the giant paw that's grabbing for it? Because he blends in. He's using camouflage as well. And did you know that polar bears are not actually white? Their fur is transparent or clear. So light reflects off of it and makes it appear white or yellowish because that's what everything else in its environment is. So we didn't learn much about the polar bear. The key detail that we need to know about polar bears is how their coloring helps them. Because the topic of this book is all about animal colors.
red fox. What do you think we'll learn about the red fox? How his color helps him. Rusty colored fur rustles through the woods. A red fox follows a scent. This small fox finds food in many places. Its red coat and dark tail help it blend in with plants and trees. Neither predators nor prey can see the sly fox. So we know the word predator is another animal that's hunting another animal. Well, prey is an animal that's getting hunted. So it says neither predators nor prey can see the fox because he's blending in. So that means he hunts too. The animals he hunts, the things he's trying to eat, that's his prey. But predators, things that are trying to eat him, also don't see him because he blends in. He's using camouflage. Being able to hide so well helps this animal live and survive in many different places. The red fox will eat almost anything, including insects, fruit, and leftover food from people's garbage cans. The seahorse. Yellow, green, and brown seaweed swishes in the shallow sea. A small seahorse swishes in the seaweed too. The seahorse is a slow swimmer. Its yellow-brown armor helps it blend in with the seaweed. Larger fish can't see the seahorse hiding. The seahorse can quickly change color to blend in better with its surroundings. It also changes color when it mates. So he uses color to help him blend in as well. And he can even change his color in case he goes to a place that's not as yellow. So that's what the seahorse does. The killer whale is also known as an orca. A huge black and white animal glides through the water. The killer whale is ready to attack. This ocean mammal is a smart hunter, so he's a predator. Black and white markings help this large animal hide. From below, its white belly looks like sunlight to the fish below him. And from above, its black back becomes part of the ocean's shadows. So he's using his coloring to help him blend in too. Killer whales use a lot of hunting tricks. Some swim under chunks of ice and tip them. Resting seals slide right into the water. The macaw is a type of parrot. Red, blue, yellow, and green feathers float in the air. A colorful macaw lands in the trees. Macaws are some of the brightest birds around. The fancy colors fit well in their rainforest homes. These bold colors help the parrots blend into their surroundings. Because in the rainforest, there's a lot of color. Maybe different plants might have some of the same reds and blues that they have. The white skin around the macaw's beak will turn red if the, bee, if the bird is excited or angry. So he can use his color in two different ways. He can use it to blend in, and he can use it to tell other birds how he's feeling. This is a black rhinoceros. What do you think we'll learn about the black rhinoceros? How he uses his color. Mm -hmm. Black rhinoceros, a big booming tank, stomps down the hill. The black rhino is on its way to the watering hole. This giant creature isn't really black. It is actually gray. Rhinos like to cool off by getting dirty, but the mud also makes them look darker. A nice mud bath makes the hot African sun easier to handle. He uses his coloring differently than the other animals that we've read about. He's actually not the color that we think that he is. He gets darker by putting mud all over himself. And how does that help him? 
It helps keep him cool. It protects him from the sun. The dried mud on a rhino's skin also protects the animal from pesky flies. A jewel beetle. This picture is an up close picture of a flower. And there's the jewel beetle in the middle. A shiny blue and gold shell shimmers in the sun. A jewel beetle sparkles on a flower. This bright beetle looks pretty enough to wear, but don't be fooled. It uses the dazzling color as a disguise. Predators think this tasty creature is part of the plant. So he's using his coloring to blend in, to camouflage. Jewel beetles also use their bright colors to find mates. Chameleon. Green skin turns yellow and then turns to red instead. The changing chameleon rests on a rock. A chameleon shade changes depending on its mood and temperature. It uses this clever color code to show how it feels. Color is one way that chameleons communicate or talk to each other. Many people think chameleons can change any color, but they can't. Their colors include black, white, blue, green, red, and yellow. What key detail did we learn about the chameleon? How he uses his color. The main topic of this book, what's on every single page, is how animals use their coloring to help them. Many people think that the chameleon can change any color to blend into his environment, but our key detail tells us differently. Our key detail tells us that the chameleon's color changes depending on his mood and his temperature, and that color is one way that chameleons communicate or talk to each other to say how they're feeling. Which other animal could use his coloring to show the other animals in his group how he feels. It was an animal from this book. It was the macaw, the parrot, yeah. Here we have a do you remember page. They want us to remember our key details. So we're going to think back and try to remember all of our information that we learned about animals and how they use their colors. It wants us to point to the picture of the animal described in each question. If I point to it and it's the right one, you can give me a thumbs up. If I point to it and it's the wrong one, give me a thumbs down. The dried mud on my skin makes me look black. This baked on color helps keep me cool. Who am I? Hmm. Is it this one? No. Is it this one? Yes. The black rhinoceros puts mud on his skin and helps him stay cool. Okay, clue number two for a different one. My black and white colors help me hunt in the ocean. With this disguise, my prey can't see me. Who am I? Is it this one? No. Is it this one? No. Is it the orca? Yes. All right, riddle number three. My bright green back looks just like a leaf. This color hides me during the day while I sleep. Who am I? Is it this one? Yes. The red-eyed tree frog has a bright green back and it looks like a leaf. During the day, he closes his red eyes and tucks his legs up under him and uses his green back to, to camouflage. He'll look like a leaf. This is a nonfiction book even though it had illustrations. 
There weren't characters, no settings or events. This book had information that we could learn about a topic. The topic was all about animal colors and how they help the animal. Just like lots and lots of nonfiction books, we have fun facts in the back and a glossary. The glossary is like a special dictionary for this book. Some of the words in this book were communicate, which meant trading or sharing thoughts, feelings, other information, like talking to each other. Disguise. That's like trying to look like something that you're not. Horizontal. Remember we talked about the pupils of the tree frog? Horizontal is back and forth. Vertical was up and down. Mammals. Animals that are warm-blooded and have a backbone. That word was in this book. Predator and prey. We talked about those words too. Those words are in the back of the book and it'll tell us what they mean in the glossary. This is the fun facts section and some nonfiction books will have this section. Hmm. Let's read the fun facts. If a predator startles a red-eyed tree frog during the day, the frog's bright eyes pop open and the sudden red color usually scares the predator, giving the little tree frog some time to escape. Why do you think they called that a fun fact? It's interesting information. I didn't know that before, did you? The skin underneath a polar bear's fur is black. The dark color helps trap heat from the sun to keep the big animal warm in the cold Arctic. That's another little piece of interesting information. It's a fun fact. Most rhinos, including the black rhinoceros and the white rhinoceros, are just different shades of gray. Hmm. Jewel beetles are so shiny and colorful that some people collect them. The bright bugs have been used in jewelry, art, and clothing. Chameleons do not change color to match their surroundings. Their color changes according to their mood, temperature, and willingness to mate. So all of those were little tiny pieces of information that's just interesting. And so they put it in the fun facts section. Like many nonfiction books, it will have an index in the back. It tells us some of the special words, but it doesn't tell us what they mean. It tells us what page we can find those special words on. Thank you so much for reading Red Eyes or Blue Feathers with me today. Do you remember some of the key details about this book that you learned? Do you remember the main topic?